the Marine Project. This will be episode 5. Now, in the last episode, I demonstrated about uh, fitting the front end, five plus front. That was all complete. Uh, I'm now in a stage now where I'm actually stripping the car down, getting it ready for paint still. Uh, job for today is to make a little cradle, I'll finish off making a little cradle, to support the engine subframe so I can take the whole unit as one on the little trolley I've got. So I'll show you how what I'm doing there, how that's been made. Uh, it's also a trolley that uh, is adaptable for the rear subframe as well, so I can take that out in exactly the same way. Uh, a couple of things I want to cover in this video are a heater I've got. Uh, it's an electric heater, uh, supposedly 300 watts, uh, which is going to fit roughly where the old uh, heater fitted. And then the other thing I just wanted to show, I've not shown in any previous videos, um, is the uh, rear diffuser I've made. And just a few steps that you need to just follow if you want to make one of those for uh, you, me, or any other car for that matter. So, anyway, I'll just uh, get the front end off. And I'll show you what to do underneath the car. Okay, so got the front off, and I uh, just want to show you this uh, trolley I've made here. It's actually a lift that I believe is generally sold to motorcycle enthusiasts. Uh, the idea is it fits under the frame of a motorbike, and you can lift it off the floor for maintenance purposes. I see it as an ideal uh, solution to get the engine subframe off the car uh, quickly and easily. So this is just a little scissor jack essentially. You just raise it up to the height you want and give you the impact drive it around. Uh, so I've seen it as an ideal sort of solution uh, to the problem. So the idea is that this will fit under here. The little cradle made, which I'll show you. And um, once you've taken the weight, undo all the bolts, and you can lower it down and uh, bring it out its wheels. Okay, so the next step is to get a suitable piece of wood, fairly strong sufficient to uh, low, at least hold uh, 150 kilograms or so. So I've just got a, an old tabletop as it turns out, it's a bit rubbish uh, that I had. So it's just a bit of soft wood, it's pretty strong. And then you need some side pieces then. I've just got a piece here just to show you, uh, which you'll need, you'll need then to fit into the subframe area of the car. And I'll try and demonstrate this from here to illustrate the point. Um, if I go right underneath the car, you'll be able to see exactly what I'm doing. But what I've used is a just a certain standard uh, compass. And what you then can do is use the compass to trace the shape of your subframe. Mine's a sort of step sort of design. Um, just mark the wood, and then you can cut out a piece for the passenger side, as I've got here, and a similar sort of arrangement for the driver's side. And I'll show you what you should end up with. So I've just uh, taken the template, um, cut it out with a jigsaw, uh, and this is the piece I've ended up with here. That's just following the profile of the subframe, as near as I can get it at least. Uh, the plan is, is to then fit a sort of piece of rubber uh, on top of here, just to cushion and stop chipping the paint off the subframe. Okay, I've just uh, trial fitted the piece here. This is the uh, section I've got. And the driver's side is the same sort of thing, there's a bit more clearance here uh, for the sump pan, uh, but it again just fits on the lower part of the subframe and the front part of the subframe just in here. So it's okay, up. I've now got the, um, the trolley in position, uh, impact driver ready. So just, I'm just going to raise that slowly, just to show you. That's now made it up with the subframe on both sides. Um, so that's proven the cradle actually works. The next step now is to make sure that the scissor jack part, the trolley part, is located correctly with relation to the engine subframe. Uh, okay, now I've got the, uh, the trolley underneath with this piece of wood on. The next sort of job is to work out where the centre of gravity is of this load. That's the engine and subframe together. So what I've done intuitively I've estimated the engine to be about 60% of the weight and the flywheel and gearbox radiator to be about 40% of the weight. The subframe, of course, I'm just going to assume that's uh, symmetrical left to right. So I've put a plumb line that is just roughly where the coil sits on the plug on top of cylinder number four. And I'm going to hold the plumb line in about that position. I'm going to stabilise this line here. 
So I reckon where it scribes the piece of wood bottom here, as I'm going to put a pencil mark in there just to indicate where I think the centre of gravity is left to right. And I'll do the same thing on the side uh, side elevation. Okay, just on the side here, I've got the plumb line uh, pretty well in line with the centre line of the engine. You can see roughly the centre line of the gearbox is just here. And we've also got the weight of the differential behind the gearbox and a little bit more subframe behind the uh, gearbox as well. <coughs> so I'll take a very rough estimate and say that the centre of gravity is probably about 2 to 3 inches, about 75 mil, rearward of the centre line of the engine. So where the plumb line comes down, uh, I'm just going to scribe a little mark on the piece of wood here. What I need to do now is to drill some holes in this piece of wood to attach to uh, the scissor jack, the scissor lift here. Uh, The, uh, the front cradle assembled. I thought uh, before I take the engine out, drop the engine subframe down, I thought I'd just spend just a moment just discussing what I'm going to do with the um, induction system. Now here I've got the original micro inlet manifold which is way too big, it's not a particularly brilliant design and it's only a single throttle body as we all know. Um, and what I'm, gonna, what I'm planning to do uh, is to fit um, four throttle bodies, individual throttle bodies, off a BMW K1100 motorbike and they will fit about here, somewhere around about there. What I need to do is get a manifold made uh, to interface between the throttle bodies here and then the cylinder head. Now, I spoke to a chap at a company called Jizzfab, um, a guy called Even, been very very helpful actually in giving good sound advice. What he recommended was to use the manifold off the Nissan so use the Nissan manifold as I've got here, cut it off, I've just put a bit of masking tape on here with a line, he recommends cutting off more than he actually needs, so the remnant I'm anticipating being to here, the edge of the masking tape here, but he said cut beyond that, so if there's any contamination in the aluminium, he can then re-trim it back to where he wants it, and uh, aqua jet it and get all the contaminants out of the metal, and he can then weld to that, some tubes, some curved tubes, to interface to the uh, the throttle bodies. Just about ready, so I'm just going to take this slowly. Uh, I've undone all the bolts, so hopefully everything should be okay. Released. So that's the engine out. The pack, as I mentioned in an earlier episode, just bring those a bit closer to the camera, you can see them more clearly. Uh, this uh, packet here fits between the subframe here, subframe mount, and the floor and that's just to push the back of the subframe down a bit just to get that all important clearance between the differential uh, mount here and the steering rack which I showed earlier. One thing uh, I want to cover in this video is that I've got a heater here, an electric heater. This is going to fit in the sort of footwell just beneath the dashboard. Um, I bought it's an eBay purchase and to be fair it's pretty dreadful really in terms of its quality. If you do buy one of these, this sells a 12 volt, 300 watt uh, heater. It's a twin outlet port, uh, just identify it. They're quite widely available on eBay, retail about £18. Uh, I just bought it as a bit of a chance thing to see what it would be like. Uh, if you do buy one, be aware that the cabling um, is way under spec. It sells a 300 watt heater. That's going to draw about 25 amps multi-stranded cable is way too thin. I think it's about one and a half mil cross section. The minimum you require really ideally is about four mil uh, to be safe. So I'm gonna be 
I'm going to rewire mine uh, to make sure it is good. The other thing with this particular one, the on-off switch here uh, actually works the opposite way around. So when it's off, it's on. And when it's on, it's actually off. So again, I need to rewire the switch. And the two fans in here, uh, the contacts inside the box, are just wire wrapped. They're not soldered, so I need to do that as well. Uh, in terms of the brackets on the side, they were pretty awful as well. So I put some rivets on the side here and uh, made some aluminium brackets uh, to hold that into the uh, the bulkhead area. So they will fit um, fit on here and uh, attach the bulkhead. Okay, the last thing I want to cover today was the rear diffuser. I didn't mention it at the beginning. Um, this is something I made really just to get a bit of extra downforce at the back end on the basis of the minis, as you know, are extremely light at the back. Uh, so I've covered up this, uh, it also protects the subframe as it turns out. Now in order for me to fit this, there's been a bit of cutting and shutting at the back end. I've taken the battery box out, and uh, where the battery box used to be is where the exhaust arms are now fits. So the exhaust leg is on the off side, driver side in, in my case. Um, the trick is you want to make one of these, is just measure up the area uh, to the perimeter of not the perimeter but the outside of your subframe to get the width and the length just to again suit yourself where you want to fit this to the floor uh, and allow for the curvature and the bit that fits the rear balance here. I will show you uh, uh, it fitted at the, the fitting up stage. Uh, the sort of fins in here, what I've done, I made myself a template, uh, I'm just going to get closer to the camera, uh, just have a bit of ply thick solid ply, get the curve that you want, the sort of shape you want to start off with and then use that to template the aluminium, cut the aluminium but leave a additional sort of 15 millimetres above the curve here so you've got something to hammer down onto the flat surface here. So the way I did it is once I cut the aluminium to shape, I clamped it onto the surface, held it with a piece of wood and then planished it over with a with a panel beating hammer on this flat here and the result is and the four fins all to the correct shape and then use some sealant adhesive sealant in here I think I use tiger seal and then it's then pop rooted in place and that stiffens the whole thing up. Okay that's it for this uh, episode um, I'm going to carry on stripping various bits off the car now and then start getting it ready for final prep uh, paint wise. Uh, there's a little bit of filling I need to do but seemingly I need to do. And I need to flat the whole car, prime it again and make sure it's absolutely level uh, before I start painting. I've also got quite a bit to do in the workshop here to make sure the workshop is clean and suitable for spraying in. But I'll do that in a separate episode. So, see you in the next.